Disclaimer, we'd like to note before the start of this interview that the opinions about to be expressed by the guest on tonight's Get and Sell the Experience podcast are that of the guest and do not directly or necessarily reflect the views of the host of the Get and Salty Experience podcast. You're listening to the Get and Salty Experience podcast. Hello! Hello, Joe Selecki. That's right. I called on Joe Selecki from Texas, Roof. There's only steers and queers in Texas. <laughs> I was going to say I, that. I don't see no horns on you, boy. I don't see no horns on Selecki, bro. So you know what I'm saying, bro? We already got the guy scoped out. We know he got married. He met a girl, moved to Texas. We already know the whole girl the guy, took right? him with the with the triangle magnet, bro. Sucked him all the way down to Texas. Left the ghetto of Baltimore. <laughs> the triangle magnet? Yeah, the triangle <laughs> magnet. Where did you pull that one out of? That thing is powerful, bro. <laughs> right out of his ass right that now. Dude, you know what my my grandma used to empires, say? Empires, brother. Empires. It's top. Half from there could pull more weight than a thousand elephants. That's right. And it, it pulled Joe Selecki all the way to Texas, bro. <laughs> <laughs> He was doing it. He was doing it in Baltimore, and now he's doing it somewhere. Irvine, Texas. He's a cowboy fan now. Irvine, Texas. Yep. Yeah. Howie, we got oh. Howie Faust in there tonight. Is a new name. Got the old usuals. Procaccini. You got the uh, Baglia from Rochester checking Howie. in. Howie. Yep. WW2. WW2 girls in there? Yeah. She just uh, came in hot last second there. Steve. Coming in hot. Pee wee, Pee wee, hey buddy. I love Pee wee. Listen, I got a guy. I got a guy today from coming in from Flint. We got a twenty-seven years oh, in Flint. A Flint, Michigan guy, bro. Oh See, shit, excellent. That's, excellent. That's gonna be a heavy hitter. Right? He's a black dude, bro. Third black dude on the show. They don't like to come on the show. I don't know why. <laughs> he's awesome. He sounds awesome. I know he's gonna be great. You know why he's awesome, Gonzo? Because he plays hockey. Oh, he that's why. Right away, he's like. Roof's like, and he plays hockey. And I'm like, you lost me there, bro. Nobody uh, cares about hockey. Oh, uh, yeah. you guys what? what the hell do you mean, Gabe, having my shit together tonight? Yeah. <laughs> Say hello to Tilly. Oh, did you have, did right. you have your did lunch with Tilly Gabe, yet? Gabe's continuing oh, no, yeah. the pictures oh. from the other day, bro. Yeah, bullshit. You guys could suck it, man. <laughs> <laughs> I got to call Tilly tomorrow. Yeah. Listen, Pete, I'm, I'm because right. you were off your game the other day. And I, wasn't, I wasn't off my motherfucking game. Pardon my French. Yeah. <laughs> What's the matter with you? Why do you, uh, why I'm do you sorry. refer to that? Well, I told yeah. you, don't be coops. Coops sucked. <laughs> you know, Ruff, I did it again. I got to tell you, I did it again today. Remember the, I told you the other day with my son, he dropped a 45-pound plate on his foot? No, we didn't hear the story. Let's hear it. So today I wake up, my little guy, Odin, he goes, uh, my throat is really killing me. I'm like, yeah, all right, bro, you're going to school. I don't care, you're going to school. But it's killing me. I can barely swallow. He's got the tears in the eyes. I'm like, oh, he's playing it up. Dude, you did that to me last time when you had the cough. You were coughing like a madman. As soon as your brother walked out the door to school. What does he have, like tonsillitis or something, right? He's got strep throat. <laughs> my wife. <laughs> my wife you know, wanna, you're you're over two. Oh, man. Over two. Over three. My other, my son Lucas. When they play football outside, he falls. He comes in. He goes, "Oh, dad, my arm is killing me." For the whole week, I'm like, "Suck it up, man. We, for Christ's sake, suck it up." He's Compound like, fracture. Yeah, he's got a <laughs> <in his arm. laughs> I take it to the doctor. He's got a broken arm. He's in a cast. <laughs> no shit. I, I you're out of your mind. Yeah, you're out of your like, mind. Dude, your, your arm is not broken. Can you wiggle your fingers? Yeah, oh, it's, not it's broken. broken. <laughs> yeah. So I'm What's over the three now, you? man. Did you give him a free you have bowl? I a little soup? compassion. You know what I mean? It's it's all right. I, you know, I did after that. I felt terrible. I just brought him some ice cream. I said, How's your throat, blue buddy? Come here. Let me, Daddy's got some ice cream for you. Turned around and said, Shove that ice cream up your ass, old man. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't he uh, trying to make the kid lose weight? You're shoving calories down his throat? What's the matter? Nah, this is the little, little guy. The little oh, guy. the little guy. All right. Yeah, he's like wiry, the little guy. Yeah. <laughs> so we got a guy out from Baltimore City tonight, bro. They do some work. I think that's work. a third guy. From Baltimore City. Is that third guy? I think right. so. Right. Fresh, freshly retired, too, so he hasn't had the nightmare yet, so he, we're waiting. <laughs> he hasn't had the nightmare about losing. You can't find your bunker gear when you uh, get a run. But he knows. We were talking about it. You lose your whole identity. You become just the same old schnook sitting at the fucking gym. Mowing his lawn. Yeah. Mowing his lawn. <laughs> 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 
beautiful. What is that? Velvet? What are you gonna play this? What are you doing? You're not no, in- what do you want to hear? What do you want? Here it comes. This is beautiful. I don't want to hear it now. I want to hear it when it's time to cube. You you better step up your game, bro. I gotta tell you that much. Coobs is all over you. Listen, he's all over you. It's just the hair. He's just, just, the he just it, 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 they're he all just haters out there. I mean, I can't help it. What do you yep. want? You know, I can't uh I can't be all right. star all the time. Are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready to, to bring in our boys from New Jersey? I'm ready. Yeah, bring in uh, uh his son just got called for the uh Newark, right? I think big Jimmy, Jimmy the Guinea. Oh, from New Jersey. Oh, yes, he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah oh, yeah. Gonna be, uh, a oh, we gotta do the ad first, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You ready? From Jimmy. Here we go. He did. Established in 1930 and under the current ownership since 1987, the New Jersey Fire Equipment Company handles a complete line of fire department equipment and supplies. Headquartered in Greenbrook, the company operates full 3M Scott service facilities in Ridgefield Park and Toms River, staffed by 10 fully authorized Scott certified technicians with a fleet of six fully equipped service vans. All New Jersey fire technicians and sales representatives are active or retired firefighters, officers or chief officers, career and volunteer. They understand the business and the importance of their work. New Jersey Fire has represented Scott since Earl Scott entered the SCBA business at the end of World War II. Among other leading manufacturers represented by New Jersey Fire are Globe and Firedex Turnout Gear, Mercedes Hose, Task Force Tips and Akron Brass, Hygienol, Fire Hooks, Arctic Compressors, MSA Carnes Helmets, ChemGuard Foam, Alkalite and Duo Safety Ladders, BA Face Shield Protectors, Truckman's Choice Saws, Groves gear racks and washer dryers, SuperVac fans, RPI, Streamlight, and many others. A New Jersey incorporated and based company, sales and service are limited to the state of New Jersey. Find us now at www.njfe.com. That's www.njfe.com. Wow, we got a Gonzo fan club. In, in the <laughs> that's true. You are a true freaking hater. <laughs> <laughs> well, they love you just as much, I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, well, Pete's going to do a commercial soon with his first gun shop. The yeah, so that the nice and slide. And, you know, the only thing is he's not going to pay for it because he's got alligator on. You know what I mean? You're going to have to pay for fucking lunch or breakfast, bro. You ain't going to pay for a commercial. Oh, yeah. not I'm, I'm, I'm a bitch. Yeah. All right, let's get our guy in here, bro. Yeah, let's, let's do this. this. Roof. All right, coming to the stage all the way from Baltimore City, Lieutenant Steve Kobo. Yay, here we go. The flyers are really oh. hot down there, Ruffy. I heard, dude, only 36 years on the job. 36 years, wow, man. You know, look at me over 82. How'd you do that? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show, Lieutenant Kobo. Thank you, gentlemen. It is a Definitely an honor and a privilege to be with you guys. He got his old yeah. Baltimore swag back there. Look at that, bro. I see it. He didn't get the man cave totally set up yet because he's, uh, you know, he's just newly retired. retired. Oh, yeah, newly yeah, retired. He's so it's, yeah. Right. He's, set up. He, yeah, his wife's still not used to having him home at night, bro. She's like, ah, oh, Christ, he's still here. <laughs> still <laughs> here. Go to the firehouse already, will you? <laughs> Please. <laughs> Please. It's no, him again. That's why I think I go know, hunting. Yeah. My wife's like, aren't you going hunting? <laughs> <laughs> the hell that's, out of house. that's the clue. You know, my mother does say that. Doesn't his wife get mad that he goes away all the time? I'm like, nah, she probably enjoys it. I don't know. Yeah, well, that's, I that's, her, that's her you break. Know? Because if, time for if, you didn't have, if you didn't have that little chicklets around, you'd be going away. For me? Yeah. yeah. My kids are too young still. When we go to the trade shows, that's it. That's enough for me. I don't like okay. being with my wife. All right, all right. Let's get. Let, we have. Uh, we got to get Patreon. Where is Sue's? You been anyway? Anybody? Yeah, since- I'm, I'm sure there is somebody. Will, I think Darren will probably chime up and let us know what's going on. But yeah, I don't, you know, I remember her husband wasn't doing very well. Oh, that sucks. All right. Well, let's get patriotic for Susie. Here we go. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation. Under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Q, 
Chaz are already throwing references in there, Steve. Where's the pine soul? They're throwing some shit in there. Yes. <laughs> uh, but a rookie. You're going to hammer me all night. I can see it. Oh, yeah. Uh, I love it. We welcome it. We love it. All right. Let's, you know what? I don't even have to ask him, Ruff. The guy came with a very concise, maybe not as long as the other guy's timeline that we had on here. That was 18 pages long, but very concise nonetheless. So. He ha even has a uh, little section here. It says family history with both. I love that part. Fire. That's the part I love the best. I do too. So take it away, Steve. You tell us. The grandfather was on. <laughs> tell us about how you got it started and how your family got started. Well, it's uh, a younger my father was in, my grandfather uh, on my mother's side. He was a uh, battalion chief. He was actually he was a captain at 16th Truck where I used to uh, be stationed. They made battalion wow. chief. And my father got in in 1956 when he got out of the uh, Korean War, and uh, he came over, and so it became a family thing at that point. And uh, growing up, you know, dad was always always working. You know, that's when they wore the uh, the brown khakis and uh, the aluminum helmets. And there was a few times when uh, when my dad was in charge at night, he was over at uh, 18 engine. He would actually, my mother would drop me off at the engine house, and I would actually spend the night sleep there cool. my, uh, dad was in charge at night so that was that was pretty unique and uh so that age of 18 19 i did a little bit of volunteering and um i said you know what i can get paid to do this so i went ahead and uh, my father kept me abreast when the test was coming out took the test in 85 got hired in 87. old baltimore city guys old baltimore city your father and your grandfather ever worked together because you said your grandfather was during the 70s and your father got on in 56 yes they did oh, yep yep they, they work at and the i same, have uh yeah same station no they didn't work in the same station but they i'm sure they were on fires together and uh i still have cousins down there and uh yeah so we still have people actually there that are so related. did you get to work with your dad at all he, he, i he did i did i did i did he so my father moved to delaware uh about five years prior to him retiring and uh, so, you know, I was doing the job and I was all excited. And of course, my dad was like, you know, I want to get home because I want to get back to Delaware. He goes, son, how about you work for me my last night in? I was like, yeah, dad, dad no doubt. You know, I'll do it. And yeah. So what was that picture that your dad? That is. Yeah. That's my dad. Yeah, that was him and his dad at graduation. Wow. And, uh, so is your dad still around? Was... No, he passed about five years ago. Oh, and, so... uh, Look at that he, young uh, lad. Wow. Young, you know, that hair. <laughs> <looking> <laughs> at, look at your father's face, though. You could tell he's like, that's uh, my boy. That's my that's boy. That's yeah, nice. Thank boy. God he's found his way somewhere. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Thank <laughs> you, got a, got a job. Get the hell out of my house. Yeah. I was going to say, so you, my what were you doing before that? Were you, were you, did you go to school before that? Did you go to college? What were you doing I went before to, that? No, I went graduated from high school. I worked in a grocery store. And uh, so I did that for actually for 20 years. I was doing both jobs um, for... Uh, 20 years I did the grocery store, got in the fire department in 87, hmm. still worked at the grocery store, and then I left the uh, grocery store as a part-timer back in 2000 when my daughter was born. And, uh, yeah, and then, you know, firemen were always picking up odd jobs here and there. Guys had so to always, break your balls about working in the grocery store, no? Like spilling aisle 11 or something like that, no? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Steve, spilling <laughs> aisle 11. Spilling aisle 11. So it was, it, was, uh, it was good, and uh, I was excited about getting in, and, uh, yeah. That was good. Kevin Brown said, Lieutenant DeGrasse and then my going to get cut itself. <laughs> uh, uh, it? all night. I think we got something like that, very, don't we? Uh, always yes, able to that, that As a matter of fact, I think we I, a matter of fact, we do. Oh, here it is. Look at this. Here it is. <laughs> that mowing his lawn? That's that. I'm mowing the uh, station lawn. That's me. Yeah. I'm That's you. You got no probies to do that? What are you, what are you doing out there? <laughs> I would. I had other things for them to do, and I would get out there. We, it was all hands, basically, and there was a lot of grass next to the firehouse. It's probably about a half acre, and uh, so it had to be done. And uh, we would split up. Guys would trim and you know rake, and I always like jumping on the mower and uh, get it done. Doesn't doesn't the city pay guys to do that? Or what are you doing? Uh, what is that? No, they pay him. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you got it. Right there. Yeah. They let him keep his job. Though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. You mentioned that down here, and people are like, "Whoa, what are you saying? Don't even go there." What you know, cutting grass? Cutting the grass down here at the firehouse. You're lucky if guys that do put their dishes in the dishwasher by us, bro. You got to worry about cutting grass. They won't even give us a dishwasher. 
So. Well, you got the Proby. He's a dishwasher. Yeah, Proby's yes. a dishwasher. So you go to Proby school. Let me see. Let me get to my notes here. He took the test in 85. He got hired in 87. What was Baltimore like back then? Because I, tell us a little bit about Baltimore because people don't know. You know, From what I know about Baltimore is you have the Inner Harbor there, which is beautiful. Mm-hmm. You step outside anywhere right outside the Inner Harbor. <laughs> yeah, it's like, like, whoa, like whoa, you're taking whoa, your whoa. life in your hands over there. But, but what's yeah, like? the, it was, it was uh, probably about the same, but you could expand a little, little bit bigger back in uh, the 80s than you, than you can now. Um, the stadium, of course, came, uh, Oriole Park came in yards, and then uh, Raven Stadium. So, you know, I kind of pushed out some of the old buildings and they came in. And so it became more and more touristy. Uh-huh. And uh, so more influx of people coming from out of state and from the surrounding counties were coming in. So, uh, yeah, it was it was still, it was pretty popular. It's not as popular actually in the harbor, in the inner harbor now. It's, uh, they're actually talking about redesigning it. But around the stadiums, is still very popular. So Yeah. What, what, how far, where did you live? In the suburb outside Baltimore or? I did. I lived in Northeast Baltimore, uh, probably closer to Baltimore County, and uh, uh-huh. lived there until I was about 11 years old, and then we moved out to the county uh, about 11 years old. How far is that? Like outside about the city? About a 40-minute drive. About a 40-minute oh, drive. Just far enough. Just far enough. <laughs> and now, and now it's, it's it's a lot worse than it was back then, right, I'm sure? It is. Or- it is. It's, it's uh, well, you know, you, you see it on the news. It's... Uh, it gets violent real quick. And, right. So, Did you guys go through your war years in the 70s like we did up here? You know, we were hitting in the late 80s and like the early 90s. It was the crack epidemic. I mean, there was uh, a lot of uh, gangs from Jamaica and all that were coming in, you know, claiming turf. So we had a lot of shootings back in the late 80s, early 90s. It was the uh, crack is whack. Yeah, crack. crack. It was crack the, uh, crack. the the whole crack ac- epidemic was amongst us, and uh, that definitely kept kept everybody busy doing that. Right. How big is the department, Baltimore City? Uh, it's about fifteen hundred uniformed personnel, uh-huh. and um, roughly how many it's stations? A, it's about thirty. I want to say 38, 36 engine companies and uh, fourteen ladder companies, and close to thirty two medic units. And they got they broke it up in six battalions. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. Yeah, it's about ninety-two square miles. Is actually the circumference of the city. Huh. Uh, rescues, one rescue. Oh, one rescue. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, one rescue, and they mm-hmm. keep very busy. Yeah, they're always running. They had to be right. They cover. They cover the whole. They cover the whole. Uh, the whole ninety or not ninety. Well, the yeah, ninety-five south of Baltimore, um, Baltimore Beltway, and of course everything that goes in the city. You know, they go on first uh, their area that they're around. They'll go on first storm assignments for uh, building dwelling fires and uh, and whatever special call that they need. I'll send them. And how many guys uh, ride on the rig and an engine and a ladder by you guys? Four. So we have uh, four on the engine and four on the truck, four on the rescue. And uh, so that's including the officer, four. Including the officer. So when I pull up, especially when you're uh, you're first in, first in ladder company, you uh, you're busy. You're forcible entry because yeah. you got your. Uh, your two-step guys uh, throwing ground ladders or your tillerman throwing ground ladders. And uh, you have your driver getting the aerial ladder up to the roof. And uh, so you're it. You're you're getting the door open. You got the engine guys coming behind you. So you really got to be on your game. You've got to be on your game getting the, uh, the front end or the front door opened up. So right. Get- and what are they sending on a, on a uh, confirmed building fire? Well, if it comes out as the uh, initial, the initial, we call it initial box, they'll send out four engines. Uh, two trucks, two battalion chiefs, okay. and a medic unit. I remember talking with uh, the chief uh, from Baltimore. Lat, what? How do you say? Lego. Uh, Lego. Rick Lego. Lego. Yeah, Chief Lego. Yeah. He. Uh, I remember him saying, "You guys still have quite a few. You know, that's one of the places that still has a lot of vacants there, right? You guys still have a lot of vacants there." I think the last count I heard was fifteen thousand vacants. Wow. Now they've been they've been working to get them, you know, demolished and uh, board them up. You know, do whatever until they can, you know, get secure the owner. You know, a lot of these owners are from out, out of state and trying to get them, you know, come secure your property, take care of your property. And uh, so that's always been a challenge. Did they stuff. change? I mean, unfortunately, we heard, you know, we lost a few guys in Baltimore last uh, last couple yeah, yes. of months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, they changed. 
They did. They um they changed the uh, the run assignments are pretty much the same, but they on the chief's assignment they wind up giving the uh, the chief aides. So the chief has aides to help them out, you know, logistically on the fire scene, second set of eyes, and you know, drive for them because uh, the chiefs uh, before them were were driving and trying to work the radio wow, and all that all by themselves. So they wow. were. Crazy. What's the word they use? Uh, task saturated is the word. Yeah, is. that's mm -hmm. the same as Chicago. They drive themselves too. They don't have. Yeah. Are they? Uh, did they change any of the SOPs as far as that with, with the line of duty stuff? They did. They um, they changed it to no hour. They you have to have a uh, companies in rear. So they want to complete 360, uh, especially when, when it comes to a vacant. Uh, they want to complete 360, and then uh, the chief on the scene will make the determination if it's uh, secure to go ahead and, and go ahead and take lines. And That's two years ago. That's crazy. Uh, years ago. Uh, no, the, the recent deaths were a few months ago um, with uh, Lieutenant Dillon. They were a couple months ago, but we just celebrated, <laughs> we're not celebrating, we just had the anniversary of uh, Paul Buttram and Kenny and Kelsey. Uh, right. Yesterday was two years for them for the three that yeah, died right. in the uh, collapse on Stricker Street. Wow. Yeah, you guys had a tough couple of years. Yeah, five and uh, yeah, five and less than two years. What all those vacants though? You got a lot of places to drill, right? Practice with the with the young guys, or are they just that the lap of the and You guys don't even go in them. They, you know, you can throw the ground ladders and all that. Years ago, um, when I first started, you could pretty much have your way with a vacant. You know, you could maybe start saws, get something going. But uh, it's, again, it comes back down to insurance, lawyers, and you Shit. know, not want mm -hmm. to. Uh, they get that. They want everything kind of, you know, controlled at the fire academy. They want certified instructors, making sure that uh, that they can see what's going on, make sure it's pro it's taught properly. So right. they've come back. All right. So let's get yeah. back to the academy. You you were going to the academy in eighty seven. How long was the academy? It was thirteen weeks. Wow, that's what ours was, right? Ralph? Did we, did we do thirteen weeks? That's quick. Now it's like ten months. I think it's what some of the guys. Are doing. Really? I think it is now. I think we. I did. I think we did like I think eight we did 13 weeks. weeks. No. Did 13 weeks, yeah, including the AM. Well, you got your EMT, which are like two weeks. Uh -huh. And then the rest was all, you know, it's fire suppression. Peace officer was like a week or some shit like that, if I remember right. It, it's gonna be third. It's, uh, I got in in October, and I got to the firehouse in January. Yeah. So Or February, January. Yeah, I got on in May, and I got on in July, the beginning yeah, of July. Yeah, it was July. July and, so it's like 13, 14 weeks, something like that. Yeah, it was July. Yeah, that. Started May, November. May and June was eight weeks. And wow, then you said July, right? Yeah, July. I got on July 2nd. Oh, oh, all right. So 10 weeks, nine weeks, something like that. Whatever. So you get into uh, how big was the class? How big were your classes running back? I had, my class, I had 45. And 45 okay. uh, got a big class, small class, comparatively? That's that average. That was average yeah. at the time. It was average. They, they try to get three classes a year through if they could. Uh -huh. um, you know, now, you know, being the uh, classes are like nine, 10 months, they, they might get one through. You know, you know, so. so did you know where you wanted to go? Did dad know where you, you were going or how did that work? Um, no, I, I kind of, you know, expressed I want to go to a truck company. And right. so um, I went 29 truck. And uh, so it was good. It was a good place to to start at. It wasn't overwhelming and it was, uh, it was a good place to start out. So I got, got a good chance November. to Right. Yep, November. Yep. Uh, so you say not a lot of service. Yep. Uh, it was a tiller, though. Yes, it was tiller. Yep. All right. Was it acting pump operator. So. Yeah. So I got a chance to really work on uh, those things like driving tiller and, and active PO because, you know, there's those skills are good to have. You know, especially being a a, uh, a new recruit, because that kind of keeps you off the medic unit and you right. help your company out. You know, if you know they got a guy. That's from the company in house that can uh, you know fill in when needed. So instead of getting somebody. So you had what engine was it with you guys in, in twenty? Four engine, yeah, four engine. Four engine, twenty nine truck. So if you if you become a pump operator, it, it saves your ass from going right in the medics that night. Is that you got it. it. And I a couple of times I would cross the aisle or cross the uh, the bay and go over to the engine and uh, pump operate for them for you know a trick or two. So yeah. Nice. So uh, it says you studied for emergency vehicle driver. Uh, which yeah. means what, like a chauffeur, like to drive the ladder truck? Yeah, you uh, it's EVD, emergency vehicle driver, and uh, you drive and uh, tiller the ladder trucks. That's a promotion? 
That is a promotion. Yeah. Oh shit! I mean, Who was your bosses there that you remember? Who was your cap? Your first captain? Uh, that's going back. Wow. Um, I, I believe is... Captain Captain Dalen was my first captain at 29, and I had uh, Lieutenant Lemon, and had Lieutenant Coleman. Uh, were my first officers. And, How long uh, did it take you to catch your first job over there? I want to say probably three months. Yeah, about three months, two, three months. Caught a lot of medics, a lot of medic assists. Uh, but the first job was about two or three months. Yeah. It was funny. Well, the, you know, <laughs> about about a year or two ago, I was transferred. I was detailed to a different company and uh, got to talking to the rookie that was at that company. And we were talking about my first fire that I had a 29 truck. And it was his father's house. So just no. shows you how really that you went to? Yeah, it was his. Yeah, that we went to his father's house. What are the odds of that, bro? Put in the street, and he goes, "Oh, that was my dad's house." And uh, yeah, we talked about it. So it was, that was kind of unique. Wow. Yeah. Crazy. So, was what kind of fire was it? Was it a, an ass kicker? It was a. It was a, a it was a balloon frame construction. It started in the first floor, and it got up, walked its way up through the second floor, up into the attic. So when we pulled up, we had a heavy amount of smoke coming out the attic, out of the eaves, and. Uh, yeah, so it was uh, in that area, 29 trucks area, was a lot of balloon frame construction homes. So you, you got that a lot. So you study, you're promoted to drive, and you go over to truck 16. Truck 16 yep. EVD. What's EVD? West Baltimore. Yeah, it was uh, truck 16 was right on the West East Baltimore line. And uh, it was good. It was a lot of service. And because uh, you kind of, you were kind of in the middle of the city, so you could go northeast, south, or west pretty easily. And uh, so got some good work there. Uh, really got a chance to work on some good truck skills. And, uh, you know, it was good. It was a good run. It was a good run. Have an engine in there with you, too? No, we were a single house. Single oh. truck, bro. Single whoop, truck, whoop, yeah. in, the middle of the, in the middle of the city? Right in the smack in the middle of the city. Yeah. Right That's awesome. Is it still like that now? No, they closed it down. It was a closed <laughs> city. I was going to say the one thing is, or two things are going to happen: either they close them, or they stuck an engine with them. Well, they, well, truck sixteen is still around, but they closed the house and uh, stuck them to where I think in my timeline you have truck four there. So they right they, yeah. uh, when they were doing closures, they they What's in that building oh, that's now? right, that's right, that's right. Anything yeah, in that building? Do what? What's in that building now? The city still own it? It was a the police. Originally bought it for uh, training, like classroom oh. for training, and then um, it is now. Uh, I think, I think it's probably. I think it's like a, um, like a like a civic, not a civic center, like a community center. I think they use uh -huh. it as now. Yeah. Here you go. This truck sixteen. Here it is. Yeah. I was trying to find a better image, but the ones that were popping up are still a little grainy. That's good. So is that a? Uh, no, that's not a tiller, is it? I can't. Yeah, it's it, a is. That's yeah, a it is. It is. Yeah. yeah, I was trying to find a good picture of it. Nice. So you go to truck 16, you said uh, you had a great shift. Did you guys work like the ABC shifts too, like a lot of the other guys do? Yeah, at, at that time I had, well, right now it's uh, ABC and D shift. We had four shifts. And at that time it was um, two days on, two days, two nights, all four. Two days, two nights, all four. And, two days, uh, two nights, and you're all four. That's not a bad schedule. Yeah, it was uh, seven, you know, seven to four, seven to five, and then usually got in about three, four o'clock and you work till six next morning relief. Usually got in about six and, you know, get you, get you home. And, uh, then they went to the, uh, 24 hour shifts. So we did, we're now they're on the shift 24 hours. So it's 24 on 24 off 24 on five days off. It's five days off. That's, that's not bad at all. Right. Rough. Yeah. Not bad. For that. And you're going to fires. Yeah. yeah, yeah you guys are, uh, that's What's the old that? firehouse, right? I just wanted that's to. 16? Yep, that's 16. Wow, yeah, that, what a was the original, that was the original 16 truck right there. Yeah. Yeah, that's that a is beautiful, beautiful firehouse. Building. Now it's a, it's a brewery. I think it's a brewery now. It looks yeah, like there's yeah, a little uh, a yeah. sign right out front there. So yeah. I was just like, look at this thing. I think they turned it into, I think they're calling it like Ladder 16 Brewery or something like that. Yeah, he, cool. he might have seen it once or twice, right? Cool. Yeah, right. <laughs> never been not, that that ever, not that ever known to go by. Who, uh, who were some of the guys in 16 truck that uh, you latched onto over there? Oh, God. I had, uh, well, uh, Al Cheney, he was the first acting guy, and he was he was great. He uh, really, really showed me around. I had, um, yeah, Beanie Muller, he was a wild man, hell of a fireman, but he was a wild, wild man. And uh, 
had I had uh, I just had some really really good guys there and uh, Charlie Lahat he was a really good fireman and I had all good firemen there it was a good house Steve Savela was there um, so it, it was good and uh, got a lot of service and re- actually learned a lot being there coming how from long, 29 truck to go there how long were you there for if originally I was there for about two years and I went when I got in the um, what they call the heat team. It's called the high rise emergency aerial team. I think I have that in my, uh, yep. my lineup. Right 93. Now. So the heat team, we did like high angle, below grade, um, confined space. And we worked with the Maryland state police to do, um, uh, like rooftop, you know, extrication stuff like that, if they need anything for the high rise fires. So the rescue was big into that. So I figured, you know what, I'm really enjoying this heat team. Let me go to the rescue so I can be there with the rescue and, you know, with, with the heat team, you know, kind of stemming from that. So I went to the rescue and uh, it was good. It was a good run. I was on the heat team, I guess, maybe five years, four or five years. And then kids came along and it really ate up a lot of time and I had to focus more on uh, kids. Hey, you always the kids, bro. You know what I mean? Well, now the uh, rescue have their own quarters or they in with somebody else? No, they were at Stedman Station right near um, – Oral Park came in yards. We call it Super House. Stebbin Station. Uh, it's pretty big. It housed at that time probably four four suppression units, two medic units, and it was that across from suppression. where the they used to have the um the what do you call it the trade show? They had the um, yes, you got right it. across the street, right? Yeah, that, house. Yeah, oh, I remember house. buffing that place. Yeah, yeah, that's where the rescue was. Wow, that's so where the rescue they, was. Yeah, yeah Rich Shelley so, used to uh, set up his. T- uh-oh. Uh-oh. So it was good run. The rescue was good. You got a lot of fires in the rescue? We did. We did. We uh we went to again, you were sent on initial boxes, but a lot of times they would pick you up and uh and send you out on uh you know just about anywhere in the city. If you got a special call, you were going. And being the only rescue, um, you kept busy. A lot of elevators, you did a lot of elevator runs, and uh so and you kept busy. It was good. What was the role of the rescue when they roll up to a fire? Truck work. Truck work. Go up and help. Truck vent. work. Yep. Ventilate. Uh, forcible entry. Go to exposures. Fix, and that's pretty fix much the problems. Yep. Fix the problems. <laughs> Take souls up up top. You know, go into either either side on uh, on the exposures, and you know whatever else the uh, the uh, on scene commander needed you to do. So. So you're there. How, do you get, how do you get to the rescue? You I was going to gonna go ask that too. Yeah, how'd you get over there? Uh, being on the heat team, and I was on the heat, so I got on the heat team prior to being on the rescue, and so I put in for it because they needed a driver, an EVD, and uh, they said, "Yeah, come on over." So I was when the spot came open, I was able to get in. Who was yeah. your bosses over there that you remember? I had uh, I had Cap Mercado, Joe Mercado. He was uh, my captain. Uh, good, good, good fireman. Really good fireman. And uh, he was the captain there when I was there. And uh, it was good. It was good time. I had uh, Steve Gibson. He was my actual lieutenant. And he's since retired. And uh, so, I really, again, we had great crews. We had really good crews. I have, um, I have your first chauffeur experience for you. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I was out before that. I was out after that. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh look who's on their game tonight, Ruff. You see that? You beat oh, yeah, him up a little well, bit. All you had to do was smack him around a little bit. And then now all of a sudden, we got the old Gonzo back. Beautiful. I miss you, Gonzo. Welcome back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you son of a bitch. <laughs> so uh, your kids come. So you want to you want to go up back to the truck work? Is that what? I did. Yeah. I had an opportunity to uh, go to truck four and truck four was, you know, you, you had, you know, a couple of truck companies in every, every city stand out and um, truck four was one of those companies that stood out. I mean, great fire service, uh, great officers, you know, great firemen. And um, I had an opportunity to uh, go there. There was a uh, guy that wanted to do like a mutual swap. He wanted to go to the rescue and I wanted to go back to a truck company and truck four opened up and he went to go to the rescue, and so we did a mutual swap. So uh, that happened for me, and it was a good time. It was a great time. It was a really good time. I was going to ask you, um, 
the hell was I just going to ask you? <laughs> Holy shit. I just looked down at my notes for a second. I, I had well, a brain fall. I, I didn't know if you wanted to discuss because you kind of, we kind of flipped past it going through his timeline. But when he was in truck 16, he had the job at the, the clipper mill fire there. Oh, I have uh, those right yes. here, bro. Hold on. I have yes. notable events. So let's go yeah. to the Clipper Mill fire in September 95. Why are you in truck 16? Yes, we uh, uh I remember that night real well, too well, actually. Um it was uh, uh September 95 was uh kind of like a night when I'm seeing out here now, rainy, foggy, it was terrible, terrible night. And we get a call to um uh, for a building fire at Clipper Mill, which is kind of like off kind of in the center of the city. So we get there and it was a um it was an old foundry building that they used to back in the day used to make cannonballs. They actually make really? cannonballs out of this building. Yeah. And it was, I would, it was about 300 feet long. It was huge. It was huge. It had the big foundry stones. And uh, since then, they converted it into um, businesses. They had like artists in there. They had a couple of like auto shops in there. So they had, they broke the building up into, you know, different businesses that went in there. So we get there and uh, the the whole, the whole back of the place is, is off. And we, we get to the front of the building and, um, and with 13 engine here, there you go. That's it. Wow. wow That's a big it's a building. big building, man. And, uh, it's a we scary get there with, uh, with 13 engine. And, um, it was, uh, myself, Paul Novak and his crew from 13 engine. So I get there, I uh, was 16 truck. We forcible entry, roll up doors. You know, we make our cut, we get inside and, uh, Lieutenant Novak uh, asking for two and a half because it's you know, a lot of fire. So we go ahead and we get two and a half stretched. We have about, I want to say six to eight guys inside the building at that time. And uh, we get about maybe 30 feet in, 30, 40 feet in. And we open up to two and a half and we're just trying to keep it from going, you know, more and more. And we're knocking it. And then um, you just heard this, like, sound like a freight train. You know, you could look in the uh, the back of the building. And you could just watch the building like start to collapse on itself. And uh, Lieutenant Novak, it was like it was coming, it was coming right at you. And Lieutenant Novak um, turned around and screamed at all. He said, "Get out! Get out! It's falling in!" So we abandoned the hose line. We all ran out the uh, towards the uh, the roll up door that we had cut. And um, just as we were getting out. Uh, it collapsed right up where we were. And um, I remember being pushed out in, into the street from the uh, debris and the big, huge foundry stones that were uh, that were making that made up the walls. And um, so I got pushed out into the street. Uh, when I ran out, I was actually next to Eric Schaefer's who we were running out. And uh, I wind up going straight. Eric uh, broke to the right. He ran along the wall to the right. And um, and then the rest of the building collapsed on Lieutenant Novak and his crew. And it was uh, it was they definitely God was down there watching them that day on that crew because they, they were right at the door when it collapsed. So the the roll up door kind of like enveloped them so that they weren't, you know, crushed by the, by the um, debris. Yeah, they were like in a cocoon protected almost, almost yeah protected. Wow. yes it was crazy and so this thing collapsed you know i uh captain uh gnostic from 33 engine he was there and i'm sprayed out on the ground and he picks me up and throws me further back out onto the road because the debris still falling so we get up and we're like wow you know we got a gas leak and it's a uh, probably a two inch main gas it's rolling i mean it's it's kicking and that's rolling it's raining. We got hose lines busted in the street. Um, so I look behind me and one of the paramedics from Medic 16, he calls over and says, hey, give me a hand. So we got the captain from 25 truck. He's knocked out and he's face down in a um, in a puddle and he's actually in cardiac arrest. He stopped breathing. Mm -hmm. He was knocked out and he was. So we rolled him over and we started doing CPR. Uh, we brought him back right there before we got him back in the medic unit. And then it was basically scouring the fire ground, looking, hey, you're screaming out people. And it's funny, we were screaming out. We At this point, we didn't know where Eric was, and we didn't know where uh, Lieutenant Novak and his crew was either. And, you know, we were hollering for him, and 
It was something you would see out of a movie. Next thing you know, you see this hand coming up through the debris from the building and he's waving his hand like that. You, that's all you saw was his hand. It's like, wow. So we ran over to where that door kind of made a cocoon over these guys and uh, moving the debris and we got him out and him and his, uh, his two guys were uh, secure underneath that door. It was crazy. You know, they were banged up. Right. And it could have been a lot worse. I hope they played the lotto that day when they went home, bro. Something lucky. It was, but just seeing his hand come, it was something you would see. You know, it was crazy. And what happened and then, to the other guy who broke right? He, Eric, Eric broke right, and he was on the rescue. And uh, so now we were looking for Eric, and we we didn't find Eric till about maybe forty minutes into it. And uh, you know, it's basically just rolling debris over, and you know, trying to see where he might have went, and. Uh, and he, um, so we found him about 40 minutes into it. And um, yeah, he was, he was crushed by the foundry stones. Wow. So, yeah, it was crazy, crazy night. Crazy That's night. one you're not going to forget, bro. No. That guy, was, uh, the, the boss who called that to get out. I mean. Lieutenant Novak. Yep. I mean, he saved, he saved a lot of guys there. Yes, I mean, he did. Yes, he did. Yeah. He's uh he's a very, he was probably one of the best firemen uh, officers, you know, to do the job. The guy is. He's got uh, he's got two sons in the job now. Uh, How, did he stay on the job much after that? I want to say Lieutenant Novak left probably six seven years after that happened. Wow, so we did another yes. six or seven. After years. I made lieutenant in two thousand, yeah, I think he retired two thousand one, two thousand two, somewhere around there. And his two boys are in. His uh, youngest son is out of thirteen engine, where his dad was. All right, and. All right. Uh, his older son is the uh, is a captain at the uh, fire communications dispatch. So, how did you not have that in your list of oh shits? You almost you almost bit. Yeah, it uh, yeah. could have went in that one, bro. Can I blame it on my? Yeah, but he's got a section you wear close. Calls. I know <laughs> that could have been in your close call section <laughs> right there. Man. Yeah, that was. That how was, how did this? you? Uh, just a quick mm -hmm. thing, like we've had that a lot. I mean, I know personally guys at the trade center who were. <laughs> standing with guys whether they were in uh the hotel at the lobby or if they were standing at the command post and all of a sudden everything started happening we just had timmy brown on he's yeah one thing. guy went one left and one guy went right you know like how, how did you handle that like uh knowing that you were that close with him at that spot and it was just you know obviously it's luck at that point you it just, is it was you know. pure pure luck it, it was i was I had an angel next to me that night. That's for sure. Um, but you didn't really think about it at the moment. And then as you know, as time went on and there was a lot of people that were injured that night. I mean, they, the light rail was right by, um, uh, by the Clipper mill. They were, they actually took the light rail and they were loading the injured onto light rail cars and taking them down to uh, shock trauma center instead of trying to do the whole medic thing, right? getting out of there. So they just load them up on, um, on the light rail and sent them down to uh trauma center that way. A lot of people, a lot of guys got pensioned that night. And, uh, of course, yeah, it sounds you know, like that would happen. God rest his soul. We lost Eric and, um, we almost lost cat in the 25 truck. And, uh, you know, we yeah, I was great getting him back. Right. I mean, yeah, it's it was, incredible. It was crazy. We rolled him over and he had that gray ashy look. And it was like, Ooh, oh, yeah. mm. said, oh, what did what'd they tell him, Lou? Stay away from the light, little boy. From the light, little boy. Light. Yeah. So that was, um, <laughs> That was uh yeah, wow. that was unique. That's great. At All least right, one some... one good thing came out of that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. hey, Steve. Actually, sorry, yeah. Doug Coop. Steve, this picture was from that fire, just so you know okay. where we, we went from before. I don't know if that you're in this image or not, but uh I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not but sure. You had to just wanted to know what it was in case you uh, yeah wanted to talk about it. Well, yeah, it was uh it was, it was quite a night and um Okay. Yeah, now I think they um I think it's condos or apartments or something that they, they really? Really, but they got a really, what they did was they put a really nice plaque and a uh, memorial nice. to Eric Schaefer there. It's uh, it's very, very nice. So it's, it's in memory of. Uh, That's Eric. good. It's, it's nice. So let's, All right, so let's discovery channel. Let's switch gears a little bit. A little yeah. fun Tell discovery about, channel. Uh, like yeah. You did a lot of stuff while you were in truck 16 or truck four. Right, truck yeah. four became truck sixteen. Went into truck four's quarters. Is that what yeah, that's correct? Or? Yes, when they closed truck four. Right, and then so, so what happened was they they closed truck four, 
So they they came to us like I don't know two days before they were closed. Oh, we're going to your guys are budget cut. We're closing you. So they're just going to keep the house single with 13 engines. So, you know, we were able to get first dibs on where we wanted to go. And I said, well, I'll go back to truck 16 because they had an open EVD spot. So I was able to go back to truck 16 in the middle of the city. So I went there and about a year later, they had a fire up on, um, uh, might, might, actually might have been less than a year. They had a fire up on uh, Utah Place and uh, there was no truck available to get up there. And it was about six, seven in the morning. There's a woman trapped and she was in the bottom apartment. And it was one of those doors. It was a great, it was a uh, bar door, but where you had to have the key to open the door. And of course, you know, she was being engulfed by smoke and everything else. She had no way to get her key. And she, um, she perished, she died, you know, uh, at that door. And so the city went, uh oh. So they went ahead uh -oh. and moved us, you know, back over to uh, truck force quarters, you know, shuffled some companies around because the councilman over there, everybody, and rightfully so, made a big stink, and uh, and the truck should have never left there. So they put truck 16 there, and uh, so I continued as an EVD over there. Oh, all right. So what about the Discovery Channel you did while you were in truck 16? Tell us about that. Oh, yeah, it was, it was, it was, that was a good time. We, were, we had the opportunity to uh, – uh, there was a film crew from uh, – they were part of Discovery Channel. They were from uh, Great Britain, and they came over, and I think they want to stayed – I want to say six to nine months and they, oh, they basically they rode with us and they rode with the medic units they rode with the rescue they rode with 13 engine and they rode with 16 truck and i think they rode with the um, fib so they kind of got a a taste of um of you know kind of different aspects of former city fire department and uh so yeah it was neat they had you know the whole camera set up and they had guys following you around and uh they were a lot more friendly or letting the actual camera crew go into some of these well and i think there's a clip in there where the actual camera guy is actually going in we had a two store uh, second floor. and uh yeah so that it was a fun time and a good time yeah let's play that video we got yeah. guns i have both so we'll play the uh this one violence and drugs mm -hmm. you can write a thousand books on that here it's 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 a lot. There's a lot of it here. Who the hell was that guy? Who was that? Oh, man. Man. <laughs> I thought that old Stokes, huh? You get heavy. Does your mother know you're working here, kid? You stunt double? Do we need to see that again? I, mean, I don't Todd, know. Todd, yeah. <laughs> One more time. I got to see that. Cut, get the stunt double and Kobo, get out of there. Yeah. <laughs> Liberty Bibbity. Liberty Bibbity. Put the other one on there. That's a good time. Uh -huh. that was fun. Well, well, I'll get you autographed later. There you yeah. go. <laughs> you catch any fires on the with you guys? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we caught we caught a couple of fires. Again, there's a lot of clips in there uh, uh, in the Discovery. Uh, you can see it on YouTube, but yeah, we caught a lot of fires and uh, pick that up. I'm gonna pull I'm gonna it up. Check on it out bro. Yeah, it it was, uh, how did I know him? I'm like, I know that guy. Cole. Yeah, look at Cole. Oh. It was career was, was great. It was a great experience, and um, yeah, absolutely, it was, it was good. It was good. Love Somebody it. wants to know if you missed the orange and white rigs. Little Pee Wee wants to know. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I, that was talking that, about that. That signified sure. Baltimore City. The orange and white uh, signified Baltimore City. Yeah. You said they might be going back to that, right? They we might. Yeah, talk that uh, they're talking about going back to the orange and white. They were kicked. They're kicking it around. The little yeah. birdie told him he still you got his finger on the pulse, bro. You need yeah. it. You need it. Yeah. Yep. All right. So let's talk six, about. Uh, uh, now this is when you were in truck one. Wait a minute. When did you go to yeah. truck one? Step by. We were just actually by. getting into truck one, actually. Yeah, that's when I made lieutenant in 2000. Yes, yeah. oh, you did. All right, so we can segue into this because your oh shit moments happened in truck one. So, yes, had a few in truck one. So, you get promoted, you go and do that thing called studying, like Roof had to do. I don't know why, but you get right. studying, you get promoted, you go to truck one. I had babies to feed, I had to, I had to get studying. All right, I understand what you're saying. <laughs> I'm picking it up. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, you know. It's, it's yeah, all right, if you want to. Some guys out on a power trip, you know, whatever you guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about the Dawson, the Dawson family fire. Oh, October yeah, 17, was... 2002, wire in truck one. Yeah, truck one, yeah, Dawson, uh, Dawson family. It was, um, it was 
killed the whole family. It was a uh, drug dealer uh, that the to the Dawson, the mother, um, kept calling the police, you know, wanting them to, you know, investigate the drug deal was going outside her, you know, her house. She had like five kids and very concerned, rightfully so. And um, so the uh, the local dealer there, you know, came to come to find out that that was the one that kept calling on him. So in the middle of the night, he took, it wasn't much from what I'm hearing from FIB was like a, a, a Sprite bottle of gasoline. It wasn't much. And he poured it around the, uh, the front door of the house and the side door and lit it off. It was about two in the morning. And uh, we get the call and it's the night kind of like we have now. It's very, it was very foggy. It was about two in the morning. It was very foggy. Couldn't, couldn't see your hand in front of you. So we're going up Caroline street and you could smell it. You could see it banking down. And uh, next thing you know, this orange glow goes past in front of the uh, truck one. So I told my driver, stop, you know. So we stopped and we got out and it was the father jumping out the third floor window. And that was oh, the shit. Glow. So uh, we did not, thank God we didn't run him over. But he wound up passing anyway. But so we get there and, um, yeah, all three floors are off and running and uh, wind up killing um all five children, the mother and the father. Oh, wow. Crazy. And they took they took the uh, the house, they gutted it out, and they made it into a, a community center. So, um, uh, yeah. They catch the guy? They did. They they caught him, and uh, he's in jail. He was a, I think he was, uh, he might have been 18 or 19. He was a young guy. He wasn't like he was, you know, in his 20s or 30s. He was a young guy. Can you imagine that? Someone driving down the street. What the hell was that? Yeah, no. it's exactly what it was. Oh, oh, what the fuck is that? And uh, yeah. yeah. Wow. It was, uh, yep, almost ran over him. But uh, yeah, that was that was a moment. That was a very Steve, interesting. I had a job like that where we lost. It was, I think it was seven people. It was five kids and two parents. And it wasn't even two cents worth of fire. It was like a TV that was smoldering. Like it was like some right. stupid thing that, you know, the little fire in like a the tv stand set up you know it wasn't mm -hmm. anything and uh i tell you right now i drew, i took the girl out of that and it was at the time to say she was about the same age as my daughter and wow. i drove home that morning because we got it was an early in the morning your stomach oh my god i couldn't even that, that, you, you talk about some jobs that stick out to you that was yeah, one man. that you know to lose and you know what was screwed up was i think it was six kids one of the boys was alive. Like they, the guys brought him back. Like uh, wow. there was kids all over the hall. It was in the projects. It was kids all in the lobby, mm. and uh, they were working on all the kids. And they had one that had, you know, when we were all standing there after the job, you know, they had said that one they had got a pulse back on the kid. And I was thinking to myself, is that good or bad? Like What's you know what I mean? Kid, like I know, like family. holy Fuck. shit, man. I mean, do you even cut? Like what kind of? I mean, you don't want to mm. say that, but. Uh, yeah, it, was, it took a while for us to find those kids. Uh, then the mother had just, you know, everything disintegrating in the house. The drywall, you know, the what well, was it was plaster and all that, and, and that house was an old home. But everything was on top of them, and um, and it took a while to sift through what was material and what was, you know, children and and a mother. It was crazy, oh. crazy night. Can't unsee those things either, Steve. That's the nature of the job, right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I, could exactly. you answer me one question? If one more guy throws up the pine soil in a the chat there, what is the love of pine soil? Ah, okay, here we go. Like Hank, probably. I was, you I beat was the very, power of pine soul, baby. <laughs> I very, in my house when I was a, in a 26 truck, I I lived and died on, I wanted, the, I wanted the firehouse clean. We got to live there 24 hours, and I wanted the firehouse clean. So my thing was pine soil. Pine soil kills everything, you know, along with bleach. And... Um, so I would always order cases of pine saw and I'd make sure the guys every morning, make sure you pine saw, make sure you pine saw. We scrub out on Saturdays, make sure you pine saw. You know, I went to the bathrooms, make sure you pine saw. Everything was pine saw. And hey, uh, if you're going to be remembered for one thing after 36 years, yeah. it might as well be pine saw. Right, right. Nobody's writing in there, hey, rubber or <laughs> yeah. pine saw. The, the firehouse is uh, 26 truck is it's been 100 years old. It was 1925 when it was built. But I tell you what, for a 100-year-old firehouse, it's a clean firehouse. <laughs> I have nothing wrong with you. got to live there, bro. you got to live there. you got to live home. there. My son does that all the time. The power of pine soul. There you go. Yeah, you got it. Mm. Okay, so, uh, before, we right, go, so we, before we go crazy, did you ever drive for Hazmat? 
up there? I did not. No. Okay. No, <laughs> no, I, no, no, no. I wanted to make sure you were behind the wheel of this <laughs> one, too. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, uh, hey, guys, I don't know. What's going on? I don't know where that one video that I sent you, the last video, it's just uh, put that up, the one where he's working the tool in the uh, – somebody sent me that, too. All right, give me a couple well, seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When you go ahead, start your thing. Let me pull All right, let's up. talk about the I 83 single car action. Oh, then, yeah, that Chuck was one early 2000s. You're a lieutenant, Chuck. One. That was crazy. Yeah, so we it was about you know, in the middle of the night, it's probably about three in the morning. The bars were uh, were cut loose out of uh, the inner harbor. So, one of the thoroughfares that folks use to get out of the city and get back up through the county is I 83. And uh, so we get a call for a single car accident up on I 83, right around where Penn Station is. Up, um, uh, up on I-83. So truck one, crew, we get out there. We're going up 83, and I see one police car. I'm like, all right, I'm thinking, okay, this isn't going to be bad. I mean, I see the car into the Jersey wall. It was a Jeep, like a Jeep Wrangler, and uh, I see it into the Jersey wall, and I'm thinking, oh, this, this ain't going to be bad. We'll get, you know, get them out. Medic's on its way. You know, we'll get taken care of. And I see a cop standing out in the middle of 83, jumping and, rave, you know, waving his hand frantically. I'm like, Come on, it's a one car. What could be so bad about this, right? Can't be good. Yeah. So we uh, we parked a truck, and I go over, and it's like, oh shit. So what happened was the Jeep Wrangler, the driver veered to the right, and he went up on the Jersey wall with the Jeep Wrangler because it's you know the big tire set up a little high, so he was able to go up on the Jersey wall uh, a little bit, and he hit the Jersey wall. And there was a fence on top of the Jersey wall to separate 83 from Penn Station, from the train tracks. So he hit that at an angle to where the pipe that holds like the chain link fence, he caught it at an angle to where it broke cleanly right at where the two connections were. So the pipe it was about, I don't know, maybe a two inch, inch and a half pipe, went through the front windshield of the Jeep. So his passenger is passed out in the front seat. Uh -oh. So the pipe goes through the windshield, he goes into his mouth, and then out the back of his neck, and the pipe lodges in the, uh, the roll cage or the roll bar that the Jeeps have in the back. So I'm like, oh, shit, and he's still breathing. Oh, he's still alive. oh my God. So oh, I'm thinking, oh, shit. What so, the fuck are you going to do there? Well, of course, I asked him the, up. I asked for the rescue what right the off the bat. Yeah. Off the rescue. So I asked for the rescue real quick, and I asked for, you know, give me an EMS officer, and then I oh, requested to the, pole. the uh... Hey, buddy. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, 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 hey. I was going like to say, big... set up the oxygen to the pole, but it's going to the big back. Big the pole. <laughs> so I asked for the GO team. Uh, I don't know if you guys had that in New York City, but we have a, um, uh, it's a surgical team on standby out of the trauma center. So when you get weird shit like this, um, amputations, things like this, uh, trains, people on, you know, trains on top of people, uh, they call the go team and they come out and do surgical procedures and, and get that. airways going. So, uh, so I called for the go team and uh, they said, oh, there's going to be about a half hour, you know, and I'm like, shit, I don't think we have a half hour. So um, not. the rescue got there. So we used a um, Sawzall and we wind up cutting about right, right past the jawline. And then right behind the neck, uh, we did a cut uh, from the bar. And then we just kept wrapping, you know, secured him, put him on the, uh, the backboard, got him down to shock trauma. So we wheel, we wheel him into shock trauma. And so the shock trauma doctor, and, you know, so those guys, they've seen it all, right? So we laid a guy on the gurney. So he's laying there in shock trauma. Doctor comes up. You got a team of nurses. You got anesthesiologists. You got everybody there. And he just kind of like looks around, walks around the other side of the, the, uh, the stretcher, goes around the other. He goes, hmm. And he takes this nice, neatly wrapped uh, bar that we that we did for this guy at the scene, pulls it and just pulls it right out of his neck. <laughs> That's yeah, it. we're thinking, oh, my, just like that. Here we're thinking, oh, my God, a surgical procedure is going to be hours in the ER, you know, all that. <laughs> no, he just went up and pulled it right out of his, I live? Out of his neck. No, he died like three days later. Oh. oh shit! That's crazy. <laughs> Technically, I could have done that, Doc. What the fuck? Did you do? That's what we were all thinking. We all kind of. Well, you always say that. never pull anything out, right? No, I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. so we, you know, we packaged it real good, and but yeah, that was a, like, a, uh oh, you know, one of those uh -oh. things you think it's routine, and you uh, you get there, and it's like, wow, okay, here we go.
But there's a probably a good chance that it would hit a major artery in that area. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. they pulled it out. Yeah. I mean, obviously, yeah. even if you hit him in the neck, I mean, he's got to be paralyzed or some yeah. shit. Who the hell yeah. knows? Yeah, it was. It was really weird looking. It was very. Yeah, it was. It was. It was haunting looking. It was weird. Yeah, something that's you kinda... see in, like a horror show or something. Ah, oh, I remember this. Uh, you ready? What is that? So, so we had a. Um, we were, it was about seven in the morning. I was a twenty-six truck, You're and somebody come. Yeah, deer. Somebody comes running up and oh, says, "Hey, there's a meat. deer." Caught in the fence. Oh, look at that. There we go. And uh, so right up by the firehouse is garden style apartments up by the firehouse. So uh, we go up there, we take a look and it's like, okay, so we brought the tool up, brought the Homatro up. And, oh, the uh, pump Homatro? We yeah. And then we were able to spray it. And, uh, that was my go-to move. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. Love well, that. Kid, because kids get their head caught. In, you don't know how to get their head in there, but they yeah. get their heads caught in the thing. The Homatro was awesome. The Homatro was great. So we spread it and 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 off the uh, off nice. the one. Put yourself in for a medal. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> Great job. He, he, he didn't know that I was on the other side, other side in the woods. I was. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <"Boom!"> <laughs> did he? Did the deer stop and look back at you? You know what? It's funny you say. It's funny you say that. The time that we were trying to get, it was a fawn. It was a newborn. It was still. It was a. Uh, it was a fawn. Um, the mother was probably fifty feet away. On just straight at the wood line, staring and looking at us while we were doing this. And then when the uh, her baby left, then they they went off together. So yeah, so she kind of like waited there. And it was kind of mm, yeah, yeah, it was neat. Get it's a little good. warm and fuzzy with that one, Russell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not warm and fuzzy. He's like, oh man, I missed now the kill. We get, now we got to <laughs> get to the old shit moments because he's got how many? He got here one, two. Got I love fuzzy. Let's see, he's got one, two, three. I got three here. Was it four? Hold on, three. Mm. Now there's three. Oh shit! Moments. You ready, Roof? Yeah, I'm yeah. ready. I'm ready. Let's yeah. get him. Let's get him, Steve. Reel me in. Set the whole thing up. Steve's a good storyteller. I like it. Do it. Let's which one you want to Which one you want to do? Um, uh, truck one and truck twenty nine, Haven Street. Hey, oh yeah, Haven Street and Baltimore yeah, yeah. Street. Yes. Um. So we get uh we had multiple dwellings off at uh in Haven Baltimore Street. I think we had like three dwellings off, and uh we get there and you're starting to put a knock down on the fire. So I go two two doors, you know, yeah, two doors down and um to do a search in, in the, the dwellings on that side. And I went by myself and I get inside and I get up to the second floor and it smokes pretty thick, it's banked down. And I get up there and um they got the whole place cut up into apartments. So I start going along and the battery on my light goes out. Boom. There's one, one thing right there going. I'm like, shit. So, all right. So now I'm feeling around and everything kind of, you know, becomes, all right, was I here? And you, you get disoriented you know, you got disoriented. And, um, so I was not getting panicky, but I was a little concerned. I said, like, all right, I'm not really moving anywhere. I feel like I'm, I'm in the same place I was, you know, you know, 30 seconds ago, I was disoriented. I wasn't, I wasn't finding my way out. So I kind of sat back, took a few, you know, took some air in. I had, I was on my bottle and I get on the, um, <clears throat> I get on the radio and I asked the battalion chief, I said, Hey, uh, just want to let you know, I'm, I'm a two doors down up on the second floor. Can you send somebody over to kind of help me find my way out? And, uh, he said, the battalion chief said, Lieutenant, go ahead and activate your pass device. So back then, the pass devices weren't integrated in with the FCBAs like they are now. Remember, I think you might remember they were on clip. Yeah, it was on your belt. Yes. Yeah. It was on your belt. It was on the clip, and it had like the uh, the pull thing, and it went off. And if you motioned, if you stopped moving for sixty seconds, whatever, it would go off. Well, as I was getting out of one truck, it came off the. the belt. No, my <laughs> God. So I didn't have fucking past device. So my that, lights that dead. Murphy, man, when he shows up, man, yeah, he, he shows did. up. So I have no light. He's a dash I, pass, I look around, I'm going, shit. And I get back on the radio. I said, I have no past device. And there was Hang like a tool, pause. Man. Hang your tool. There was, there was a pause, you know, and the chief, and there was a little pause. He said, we'll be over to find you. Hang tight. And um, so, yeah, bang my tool. I did that, and, you know, created some noise. And, uh, and uh, my EVD, Alex Dorini, he was, uh, he came in, uh, Joe, uh, Joe Miller, the first acting guy, they came up and, uh, they had pulled me out or, you know, assisted me out and helped me get out. Yeah. So, uh, 
Hope you bought the guy a case of beer or something after that. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Well, like you said, it, all those things, you know, the light and then the pass device, you're right. Yeah, Murphy, man. here he came, right? Well, yep. you know what we say all the time is like uh, when you get in that situation, don't be too prideful that, uh, yeah. you know, you don't want to wait until well, it's too far along where uh, now you don't, now you have no choice uh, because it's really getting s shitty out, you know. And I'm looking at the gauge on my bottle. I'm like, okay, I, yeah, got, time. Yeah, yeah. I got time, you know. That's a good way Last to do it. Show. Yeah. Ho hopefully some time. guys out there, they could, you know, you could word it delicately like <laughs> that so it doesn't sound like you're... Uh... <laughs> Got some time. Before. You got some time, but yeah. uh, get the hell up here. Yeah. Get out there and get me out. Yep. <laughs> oh my god. All right, you want to do Pine Pioneer Avenue or do you want to do Northeast Baltimore Fire? What, what was the uh, avenue? What was it? Pioneer, Pioneer Avenue. Oh, Pioneer or, or Avenue. North, yes. uh, the other one is Northeast Baltimore. Yeah, Fire. that was the yeah, Pioneer Avenue. I was at uh I was at 29 truck. And uh we had a uh port of a fire dwelling. It was a uh Rahom, and it was end of the group, and it was about again two in the morning, one two in the morning. Nothing so good happened. Two o'clock in the morning. Yeah, everything happened. Nothing happens good every morning. So, <laughs> no, no, so no, we get nothing. there. We got <laughs> heavy smoke coming out the front door, or the front door. We had a force venture where we have heavy smoke coming out the uh, second floor, first floor, and uh, they confirmed that it was a uh, they had a basement fire. So I get forceful entry in. I got forty three engine behind me with a line. Um, Work the uh, work the bar, uh, get the door open, and start going in. I, I immediately start heading up to the uh, second floor, and I got guys throwing ground ladders. I got my driver throwing the uh, aerial ladder. So I immediately start heading up to the second floor. It's two in the morning. Where's usually everybody at two in the morning up in the bedrooms? So um, I start heading up to the second floor, and I get up there, and then 43 engine comes in behind me, and I'm going to start breaking off, search the bedrooms. And I just feel this tremendous amount of heat. I mean, it was, it was a tremendous amount of heat. And I looked behind me from the stairway coming up. You could just see that rolling flame just coming up your, you know, coming right up your ass. And I've got 43 engine there. I'm like, crack the line, crack the line. But they cracked the line, no water. They uh, had a dead hydrant. And oh, boy. Murphy no again. Murphy again. So I'm like, fuck. So it's getting tremendously hot. So I turn around to guys in 43 engine. I said, go, 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 get down, get down the stairs, go, go, go. So they went ahead and went down the stairs. I was right behind them, like really fast right behind them. And uh, we start heading back out towards the front door. And what had happened is the first floor collapsed into the basement. So that's where that tremendous amount of heat uh, got released as soon as that first floor collapsed into the basement from the basement fire. So 43 engine gets out. So I'm coming in behind them, coming going for the front door behind them. So the house was a um, had all hardwood floors. So the shellac that they had on the floors has now become liquid because of the heat. So I go to go out the front door. I'm slipping. I can't get out the front door because of the shellac on the floors. So now I'm falling down into the hole. I'm at the front door and then I I'm actually going back oh, inside. Shit. I'm falling back and down into the hole and I'm like shit. So Chief Campbell was uh, Mike Campbell. He was the uh, battalion chief in the, uh, the uh, side A front of the building. And him and uh, Wayne Brubeck from Four Engine, they physically came in and just reached in, grabbed my arm, and just yanked him like and pulled me out. God, so you got to play it. Right step. Yeah. Which one? Oh, play it. Play it. hold on a second. <laughs> oh shit! Here we go. You go. <laughs> we go. <laughs> we go. <laughs> All right, look, God is on his game tonight, but he's reading my mind. We're back in St. God's. Good job. <laughs> you go. Uh, I didn't know if it was time. I believe it was. We're we going like this, Steve. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 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 Like your cheeks going like this. I guess he was holding you. Oh my God! It was, <laughs> I was, and it was just having those guys. It was. You know, lucky that they were able to grab me before I <laughs> fell down in there. And come to find out, they uh, the folks were on vacation, so there was nobody inside the home anyway. And, 
<laughs> Listen, we're making fun of that, but you know, when you're uh, when you're when you're dangling going into the basement, it's uh, it's probably when not you a slip good. slide when you when you're on the you slip and slide. slide it was the slip slide. slide. It was the shellac from the damn hardwood floors, and it Steve was slip sliding away. <laughs> mm. And we had, I think, the same one. I had one twenty nine truck, uh, another one. Yeah. Which one we talked about? Northeast Baltimore fire? Yeah, Northeast Baltimore. That's uh, was like a 20 cat, bro. He had like nine lives, this guy, bro. I yeah. tell you, it was, uh, I, like I said, Murph sure did follow me around. And yeah, uh, so we had fire in the middle of the night. And um, I get up, get forceful entry. I go inside. And I start going up to second floor, do my search. So I get, break, I break off to the left. I go into the bedroom to the left. And I start my search, got my tool. Coming around, you know, right hand to the wall, doing my search. And I'm coming around, coming to the front door so I can go to the next bedroom. You know, search the bed, under the bed, all that stuff. And smoke, you can't you can't see anything. And everything's by feel. And uh, so I get around, and I'm sure I'm going around this room a long time. You know, I keep, it's like, God damn, the front door was right, the door was right there. So I go around again. No door. I'm like, shit, I can't get my way out of here. Where the hell did the door go? So uh, my first acting man, uh, Aaron Edwards. So I kind of called him like nonchalantly on the radio. I said, hey, Aaron, yeah, uh, can you come up on the second floor, man? Give me a hand, <laughs> right? So he comes up on the second floor and, uh, you know, I'm banging my tool and he comes in. He's able to, he got the door open, came in. And then after we got out, got the scene cleared up. What had happened was when I went into that bedroom, there was a, uh, 45 pound weight bar bench bar that was in the corner of the room. So when I went around and did my search, that bar fell against the door and shut the door. Mm. So I couldn't find my way out because that door became shut from the bar. And of course, you know, you can't see anything from you. I'm looking for the window, trying to open the window up with my tool. And uh, yeah, so that was another, yeah. That's fucking you know I mean? Got Murph, lives, but Murph, the, the whole idea is he didn't wait until it was really getting to the point where it's that too late. Tip, right? Yeah, that's the yep. key. Yeah, nah. Mm-mm. And that's no the way I do it. I used to say every once in a while, <laughs> if I was in a pickle, I'd be like, uh, Freddie, where are you? Or whatever, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. get your ass up here. What, what is, yeah, I never what is, screamed, didn't want to make a big deal. Yeah, 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 I, knew yeah, Aaron, yeah. I knew Aaron was close by. I knew yeah, he was we have plenty of time to scream. We have plenty of time to scream. Steve, what is this? And after all those close calls of fire, it was an old watch desk that took him out of engine 36 at out at 36. Oh yeah. Oh my God. Yes. So, so I get uh so when they went to this 24 hour shift, 24 on 24 off 24. On, so they came up with this uh what they're called um impact days. Have you heard of them? No. So they do them in Lake Houston. So since you get that five days off, um they want to make up those hours, the city does. So they schedule you, you basically work free um, to get your hours back up to a full 96 hour work week in a two week period. So you, they put an extra day in each month. So it was a, uh, it was an impact day. So it was a 36 engine on West Baltimore. Um, not familiar at all with it. Um, I don't even think I was even stationed there at all while I was a fireman. So I get there and we had a call and um, I get back. It was a car accident. I'm going to turn out pants and everything on. And I step off and there was a, uh, uh, a, uh, an old, old watch desk. So it had the old concrete um, floor that was there, but the watch desk was since gone, the walls and, and uh, you know, everything else that went with it. So I step off the wagon and down, goes down I went, I caught that. Down goes Frazier. Down goes Frazier. <laughs> Frazier. And I got up and I was like, and I went to move my shoulder and I went, Nah, ain't happening. Ain't happening. And uh, he had tore rotator cuff. Tore rotator cuff. The tore guy slip sliding on urethane lacquer. That doesn't do nothing. Yeah, tore. Yep. It's the watch that. That does it, bro. Yeah, it was. Uh, uh, it's probably pine soul on the floor. So. <laughs> <laughs> they probably put the pine. How much lacquer did you put on that thing? It went up like a match. Pine soul. <laughs> That was uh, a hell. Of, I, I tell you what, that's that's a hell of an injury. Pulling, you're tearing your rotator cuff. I had that. Therapy. That's what I had. Yeah. Ooh, a lot of physical therapy. Oh, I didn't have the rotator cuff. Yeah. yeah. I had a partial. I had a partial in the labor room. That sucks. Yeah. It's probably about nine, ten months, Lou. Something like that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, no doubt about it. It was a year. Is that what finally did you in? 
No, no, I, you know, I recovered from it. And they, went uh, back. <laughs> yeah, went back. Yeah, I was, I was cool. You know, I had kids in college. It was like, okay, I, you know, I got I got to get back, you know? And uh, so I made it back and um, it was good. It was real good. Look at that. So right, let's talk about went, a lot of 49. Yeah. A lot of hold 49. on, hold on. Hold on. That's yeah. like at the end of the career. No, when is that? Oh, well, what? No, the latter 49 was when I was a truck one as a lieutenant. Oh, all right, good. So we're yeah, good. You're good. I'm not, I'm not, so, uh, I'm, so, not, I'm not an animal. I'm not an animal. <laughs> so Hollywood came to Baltimore. And we had, uh, we had um, John Travolta. We had Joaquin Phoenix. Uh, we had Tim Guinea. And we had a couple Guinea. of- Whoa, whoa, whoa. Tim. Who's a Guinea? What? Tim Guinea. It was his oh. name, Tim Guinea. He was one of the actors. He actually uh, was played the uh, character of the captain when Travolta made Chief. So um, so we uh, they, they brought the crew, the Hollywood crew. They brought them in. And they had uh, like Joaquin and a couple of the other extras like Tim Guinea and all that go through the fire academy, kind of getting, you know, wearing an SCBA because they were going to be wearing SCBAs while they were filming. And so they put uh, Joaquin with 10 truck and they put Tim Guinea with us at one truck to ride as, you know, get some experience, you know, get some firefighting experience, see how it's done real, real time. And um, so one night, uh, Tim Guinea, or not Tim Guinea, uh, Joaquin was going to ride with one truck. So he stayed for like a half hour. And it was about seven o'clock at night. He's like, nah, I'm going back. So he, they stayed at the Marriott Inner Harbor is where they, uh, where they were put up. So Tim Guinea, the one actor, said, I'm staying with you, Steve. You know, we'll stay the whole night. So uh, about midnight, we, uh, we catch a fire up off of Greenmount Avenue. And uh, we wound up pulling like two or three people out of that house. And Tim Guinea, the, uh, the guy that was the actor, uh, he wound up helping us pull people out. It was, it was it was pretty pretty weird. So you know, of course, Joaquin misses this. You know, he's at his hotel room, all snuggled and you know whatever. So we we get done the fire, we clear the fire scene. So I said, you know what? Let's ride down to the Marriott in a harbor. So it's smell about, like smoke. Smell like smoke. So we go about two three in the morning. We go down to the Marriott in a harbor. Joaquin's up on the tenth floor, and uh, so we bang on his door. We kept our turnout gear on. So uh, he opens up the door and. Uh, we go in and tackle him and, uh, you know, told him what, you know, how much you missed. <laughs> What's hey? yeah, basically, yeah. Smell my and, shit. Uh, <laughs> and he missed a rescue. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, that's a, that's some job to miss. Uh, Holy shit. That guy put it right in his face. <laughs> it was great. It was good time. It was good time. How was, how was John Travolta? Guys want to know how John Travolta was. Man, he, he was great. John Travolta was great. Uh, he was very, um, yeah, he was, he was great with everybody. Very, you know, friendly, uh, wasn't snobbish at all. You know, wanted to know about everybody. Like, you know, hey, how many kids you got? Your personal life? How long you been doing the job? You know, he uh, he was great. He was really, really good and enjoyed enjoyed being around him. What so, the firehouse did they film that out of? Um, 33 Engine, which was on Gorsuch Avenue. It's now closed down. But uh, it actually was closed down while they were using it. They used that closed firehouse as the... Uh, as their prop. So they right. had construction crews go in, get the firehouse up, you know, get it to where they could film. And uh, yeah, so that was uh, where they filmed it at. I, would, I think I only saw that movie once or twice. I got to watch that movie again. Yeah. That's yeah, the song, movie. Shine you, Your Light. You don't, have, you don't have a cameo in there, do you, Steve? No, it's one of the big, the big scene they had down at the, um, the Inner Harbor with the, uh, the, the uh, grain silo on fire. They had guys like us running in and out of the scene. Uh, you got paid overtime, and let me tell you guys, they fed you well. The uh, caterers that come from these Hollywood uh, yeah. movie sets, I mean, they they, they feed you. They really talk well about there. thirty-two, eighteen wheels there. Oh just my the god! Guys. I mean, whatever you want, <laughs> steak, shrimp, lobster. I mean, it was like whatever you want, and they they paid you well. As, as on overtime, on yeah. overtime. How you doing? That was good. You know how many times, how many opportunities you get a chance to do something like that? So uh, it was yeah, good. not too often. Not with no. a movie like that. That was pretty iconic too. I mean, that's up yeah. there. You know what I mean? Yep. With the movie, very good. So yeah, Joaquin, he was he was a good guy, and uh, yeah, all the actors were were great great with us. They showed a lot of appreciation when they left, and uh, no, so it was it was good. It was good for the city, good for the firemen, and uh, good for Hollywood. So that's two things we got to watch. I'm gonna have to watch that again. We gotta watch Ladder Forty Nine, and we got to watch him on the. What uh, year was that? Two thousand four. I don't even uh, know. I had it right here. So it's after 9 11, I think. Yeah. What other yeah. pit? 
Guns, yeah. where's that picture with the uh, the no shirt? Where's that picture? Whoa. Uh, oh. <laughs> Look at Steve's face. He's like, ah, shit. What, what are you? What are you? Uh, what There's a lot mean? of little birds, Steve, sending me stuff, I got to tell you. Hey. Whoa. Whoa. That guy. He's laughing up with, huh? with, with the oven approved pine sole. What are you I, am, I am <laughs> getting, getting the oven clean. My house is very clean, guys. I, I would <laughs> say so, that. man. Yeah. yeah. No judgment here. But, but why, uh, just, just going to throw this out there, why are you cleaning with no shirt on? Just um, curious. It was hot. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it was hot, yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, man, you know, like. Finish getting his swole on. That's that guy I mean. that's sitting down, he doesn't look like he has any interest in looking at that stuff no, at all. No. There was a steak coming out of it. Yes, it's fucked yes, it's, it's absolutely no interest. <laughs> <laughs> I was oh going to say something, but I didn't see he might know him. So. Yeah, yeah, better. Yeah. What what <laughs> other pictures did I have, Guns? Oh, this picture. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. What was yeah. that from? Dad, moving a car from the scene. They, uh, he had, he had an accident, and they were tied up, and uh, we had to get the medic unit in there. I was going to do a park on a hydrant again. So I said, yeah. hey, you know, give me the keys. I'll move it for you. And the cop went, yeah, go mm -hmm. ahead. So and then yeah, he wanted, to, like, oh. he wanted to feel how it felt for a second. Yeah, got yeah, car. Yeah, Let me just get a little feel for this. Let me grin his bro. Yeah, the guys that work. Yeah. Grin on his face. He's smiling away. Copological mm -hmm. indicator right there. Yeah. What you got? You got more? Yeah, I got this one. Ah, there's my man right there. That Jason Stevens. He's he, he grew up in the Bronx. He's uh he's a lieutenant in Baltimore City. He grew up in um what's that Highview Towers? Does that sound right? Off of the university and in the Bronx. I don't know shit about Yankee the Bronx. Stadium. Yeah. He uh he came to Baltimore when he was about 20. And um, he was my first actor. That great guy, you know, love him like a brother. He's uh, study hard. He made lieutenant a little over a year ago, and he was a '52 engine. And then uh, we kind of timed my retirement to where he had a year in grade at '52 engine as a lieutenant because he wanted to come back to Truck nice. 26. And yeah, uh, yeah, so yeah, yeah. I timed it to where his year came in, and then I left, and he came. Uh, Slid it to your spot. Grade. Yeah, I tell you what, there is a, that is a great fireman right there. That, that guy is diamond class, and uh, they don't make them any better than him. Look at that uh, front Thank shield you. there, Ruffy. See, I've seen a couple of uh, yeah, yeah. fires or two there, that, that yeah. 26. Well, that's what, you know what I wanted to talk? So just uh, uh, after you, you got, we were in truck one as lieutenant for seven years. You went back to 29 truck where you were, yes. where you first got on the job. What was that like? It was good. Uh, it was, you know, going back as an officer. Um, of course, nobody was there, you know, when I was, it was a fireman. So it was good. It was good to get back there. And um, that's because they were still in grammar school when you were fireman. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say you're older. I'm just saying. I'm not saying 36 it was, years. It was good. There was a, a good friend of mine who was a captain there, Captain Gregory. He's a battalion chief now, but uh, Captain Gregory was a captain there. And uh, he was a good friend of mine. And they had a spot come open. And, uh, he, uh, you know, he asked me, he said, hey, you interested about coming back up here? And I was like, yeah, sure, I'll come back up, you know. And uh, so it was good. And I, you know, spent spent many years there. It's where a lot, a couple of these incidents with the, uh, the, uh, the oh shit moments. Uh, yeah. There, it was a good house. It was a very good house. So why did you transfer to twenty six then? Because you finished from sixteen to twenty three, which is a decent amount of time in, uh, in twenty six truck. Twenty six truck. It was. Uh, something different it was a straight truck it wasn't a tiller truck it was a straight truck so you had kind of like everybody up front two guys on the step and then your your officer and then your driver and uh they were getting a brand new truck and had an opportunity there and uh you know go a little bit further east a little bit closer to home you know coming off 95 and uh so yeah so it worked out you know be a little bit closer to home so it worked out good and i knew at that point that was going to be um my oh, final, hurrah. my yeah, final, yeah. yeah, that was the swan song. Twenty six was going to be the swan song. Twenty six was going to be swan. Good guys, great guys. Um, I got to tell you, uh, they they treated me well. We had a great crews, good firemen, uh, Captain Burgett, uh, you know, great firemen. Um, just you know, everybody there. Uh, I had had a. I was very fortunate to work with uh, great firemen like I did throughout my career. And uh, what made you want to pack it in then, Steve? You know, the kids were finished college. It was uh, 36 years, and I was turning 60, and um, it was a good Man time. Was to go. tired. It was it was tired. Good time to go. I mean, everybody say, knows when it's time. They say that um, 
you know, if I would if I would have stayed like another year, year and a half, it would have made maybe forty five dollars difference on on your pension each month. It wasn't a whole lot, you know. And uh, you know, I was trying to do so. It was time to uh, start that next chapter of my life. And right. uh, and my wife was like, you know what? You pulled the tiger's tail a lot of times. And yeah, yeah, hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. And, uh, Got it's, lucky a few times. Well, it's going to fade yeah. again. Yes. So, tell us what it is like now. You get up, you make breakfast for the wife. and what, tell Yeah, us yeah well, doing. that lasted, guys, I got to tell you, that lasted about two weeks. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> I would, so I would get there and uh, <clears throat> I, I would get there and um, and she, my wife works out of the house. She's a nurse. And so she has an office here set up in the house. So, you know, I would get up in the morning, knock on the door. Hey, what you doing? And she would look at me, her glass would drop down. I'm working. I was like, <laughs> you know? so that, what are you doing? Bad. Nothing. That, that nothing. Two, yeah, nothing. That two hours later, knock on the door. Hey, what you doing? You want to get coffee? She's like, no, I'm working. I'm like, damn. So about the second, third day into that, she goes, you got to get a job. You got to do something. <laughs> You know, and so I had a great, I had a great opportunity, guys. All kidding aside, I had a, I had a great opportunity. There is a. Uh, you went back to the supermarket. No, didn't go oh. back. To the supermarket. <laughs> I wind up, I wind up, uh, had a couple guys approach me that um, that worked for uh, Harbor of Grace. We call it Harbor. It's called Harbor of Grace. What it is, it's a wellness recovery center for police and fire and uh, first responders, and um, it was. Uh, it was a great opportunity for me to go there and, you know, work. And then I kind of, you know, said to the owner, uh, Ken, I was like, you know, what, what could I, you know, possibly add here? You know, I, you know, what could I do? And he said, Steve, all your time that you've had in the fire department, all the situations you've been in and, and the way you dealt with uh, different circumstances and uh, events in your life, you know, you can help these young guys out, you know, and, and the older guys that come through here and, uh, you know, that need help, you know, navigating their way through. And, um, so I got a great opportunity. It's, uh, the place is awesome. It's a Harbor Grace and it's a, a wellness center and it's, uh, they, people come from all over the country to, uh, to come there. And, uh, it's, it's a great place and I'm very fortunate fun? to be there. Yeah, it is. I've got three days a week. So it's a good time. That's yeah, you're not killing yourself. Yeah. Right. Exactly. It's nice. Yeah, it's, it's, it's good time. And, uh, and you're not torturing your wife. So it's no, great. no, no. I'm up out of the house. I'm not knocking on the door. And uh, oh, Jonathan Wright. Yeah, there he is. Okay. You had to, you had to grab your last day. My last day, isn't that something? It's like <laughs> what? <laughs> Holy shit! He just, guys, I'm telling he just you, forgot you, about that, Cub. He's like, yeah, oh, he had something. Yeah, don't worry. He had yeah. something. A couple of grabs. Yeah. You can't. You can't write this shit. I'm telling no, you. No, you can't it's, write that up. I can't write it, this that's shit. incredible. You, you can't. So it was my last day. I mean, my physically, I am retiring. My last day. You know, they're talking about having a dinner for me that night. Well, they were having a dinner for me that night. So, um, so they, uh, they, uh, they. So we get about six thirty in the morning, seven o'clock in the morning. We get a. Uh, a call for an apartment fire up off of Sinclair Lane. And as we were going up the road, you know, communication comes back and says, you know, companies be advised, we've got reported people trapped. I'm like, all right, so, you know, lean over to guys in the back. I said, guys, we got people trapped, you know, you know, have, have your shit ready. You know, we got people trapped. And um, so we get there and it's a three-story garden apartment and uh, we pull up. You don't see much from the front at all. So we uh, make it up to the second floor uh, we kicked the door in to the second floor apartment and uh, a lot of, a lot of smoke, not a lot of fire, a lot of uh, smoke and some heat coming out of the, uh, the uh, kitchen area. So I'm crawling in and I see a pair of feet and we had truck 30 was in there as well. Uh, uh, Samson, John Sampson from truck 30 uh, got in there with me. Actually, he got, he was the first one to get in. So he crawled in, I crawled in behind him and you see these pair of feet hanging out the, uh, the kitchen area. And so he's down. I was like, shit. And John's hollering, you know, the tenant's over here. He's over here. So we go to pooling. John picks him up from behind. I get him from, you know, underneath the, uh, you know, the, his knees. John picks him up from the, uh, from the front and his skin just keeps calling, coming off in John's uh, hand. And I mean, he was, you know, that uh, kind of burn. He's picking him up again, dropping again, pick him again. So finally we just drug him over to the, uh, the, the, uh, the apartment door. And then, uh, Lieutenant Hagley, Vince Hagley, helped us grab him down. 
we took him down to the front lawn. He was not breathing. So we started bagging him and we brought him back and uh, the medic unit got him and uh, we had him breathing all the way to the hospital. So yeah, it was grab my last day. Crazy. Huh? Wow. You guys, did he, did he uh, survive? No, <laughs> um, he, he, he was, I think he was 72 years old. Oh, so, uh, and his, his whole upper body, he had probably a lot of inhalation burns and right. he was third degree. I mean, he was, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you guys uh, get the medals for when you make grabs, or you guys write each other up? Or how does well, it, it it all depends on um, the chief. You know, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. You know, most of the time they do. I'm not sure on this one. I, you know, again, it was my last day, so I guess I'll find out. You know, when they announce medals day. Um, but yeah, whatever. You know, it's all good. And uh, no, but yeah, last day grab. Crazy, it's crazy it? man. It make that shit up. And man. you went back and you had some uh, shrimp parmesan, a couple of lobster tails, right? <laughs> yes, yeah. We, they had. I'm a big spaghetti guy. Love spaghetti. So oh. they, had a, they had a spaghetti dinner for me, and uh, had invited my family down. And there was probably guys. I'll say probably about 50, 60 people showed up at the firehouse that night. So that's a lot. And again, uh, Captain Burkett, uh, the captain there, he, he he really put on a show for me and all the guys there and. Uh, I was very for very fortunate to work with uh, such a great crew, and uh, yeah, very very fortunate. John, well, fortunate uh, to have you on the show here, fella. Yeah. It was <laughs> great career, it was, man. Uh, it was a good time, but uh, you know, we, and you learned. Like I said, you learned a lot of things on the way. I can tell you a, a story um, where um, I was at sixteen truck, and you know, just going showing you know some of the 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 older. You know, chiefs, the older guys that were around when I was, you know, learning the job that kind of, um, you know, kind of brought me along. We had a chief Moritz, Mike Moritz, and uh, we had a report of a fire on Riggs Avenue and Cary Street. So we get there and it wind up being a pot of food. So I was on 16 truck, but we had a fill in officer. He was from another company somewhere. I can't remember his name. So we had a fill in officer. And, you know, we always take ladders off the truck. You know, I mean, whether you're going to the front or the rear ladders come off. And that was Chief Moritz's big thing. I don't care what you do. You better have at least two ladders off, if not three. So we get there. So the officers saw, you know, first company in the first truck company in 10 truck say, you know, it's pot of food, you know, we're going to handle it one and one. And um, so we go to get the ladders. We're taking the ladders to the, the back and uh, Lieutenant that was working, that was filling in. He goes, nah, nah, we don't need them. Go ahead and throw them back, throw them back. We don't need them. I was like, Okay, you know, boss said put him back. So did that. Uh -oh. So Chief, Chief Moritz, and I tell you what, that guy there, hell of a fireman. Like I said his uh, his two boys were in the job in uh, FDMY, and um, he uh, he comes up to Lieutenant and he says, <laughs> Lieutenant, what the fuck? What the fuck? Where are my ladders? And he's like, Well, you know, it was a pot of food, Chief. He goes, Where are my ladders? And he, he just screamed him in the ass and he told all the companies to leave after it was done. Everybody leaves. 16 truck, you stay right here. So we took every ladder off the truck and laddered that building twice, not once, but twice. So we're talking a 35 foot, a 30 foot, 24 foot, 16 foot, the comb ladder. Okay. You know, the attic ladder, the comb yep, ladder, yep, yep, yep. And the attic ladder and the comb ladder. Every so ladder. Just, just stay. Every ladder had to come off that truck, even the, the little giant you used to like for inside, like a closet or something like that. <laughs> Every ladder came off that truck. Then he made us put it back on. And we're like, okay, you know, I'm embarrassed at this point. And he's like, all right, do it again. Off comes the ladder again. And, I uh, like this guy. He was, he was a hell of a farm. He moved, wound up moving up to um, Manhattan. And his, uh, mm -hmm. his boys uh, – are or were in the job? I think. Yeah, I know that last name. I definitely know that last. Somebody name. Somebody just said that they're on the job. Uh, yeah, great, great chief. That was guys like that you learned from. You know, that was guys that I, and and you know, Chief Lego. You know, my last battalion chief when I was a twenty six truck. I mean, awesome guy. I worked with him when he was a lieutenant at thirteen truck, and uh, you know, just those guys you learned so much for. And I was, you know, I was fortunate enough to to learn the way that that you know that they were teaching. And I was able to, um, you know, pass it on to my guys like Jason Stevens, who's, uh, you know, he's an excellent, excellent fireman. And uh, so, yeah, so if I have anything to say at the end of the day, it's, uh, you know what, these guys, you know, got some, got some good knowledge that will hopefully 
carry them through and that uh, they themselves will pass it on. You know, uh, you know, Timmy Klett's kid, he's in Baltimore, right? I think. Uh, no, it was, uh, they have, um, tr tr uh, tr 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 Oh, uh, tr yeah, yeah, yeah. Carico's kid is Carico, there. Yes, right. yes. His oh, son's right. a captain. Yeah, good guy. His father was, uh, I think a lieutenant rescue three. Does that sound right? Who? Tricarico? Yeah, Tricarico. He was captain. He was a captain. Squad 250. Squad 250. Captain 250. Okay, he was a captain. Yeah. And uh, he wound up moving down to the Eastern Shore, Maryland. Here. I met him a few times. Oh, that's right. His that's father. where he was going. That oh, was right, 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 right. Yeah, he was moving. He, uh, talking to that guy, I mean, I wish I had 10, 15 hours a day to talk to that guy. I mean, just the wealth of knowledge. That, that, uh, we'll go back to the episode that we had him on. You can listen to him for two hours. Yeah. There you go. He, <laughs> he was, uh, you know, just sitting there, you know, talking to the times that I, I have met him, and um, you know, just a wealth of knowledge, you know, just just wealth of knowledge. And his his son's a, a, a hell of a fireman, hell of an officer. So uh, he he did him proud. He'll do well. He'll do real well. Steve, there was some, what was the question that uh, uh, Jeff had posed? Yeah, thank you, Gons. Mm -hmm. Ask him. Uh, if he was working the, during the freight train fire under the city that burned a few days. I was, that happened in July. It was a hot, I remember it was a hot July day. That was probably, I can't remember what year. It's in the nineties. No, I was off. I was in vacation at the beach. Nice. Woo! Better than you don't need no freight they train fire. That, right? I, mean, no oh, I, will, I will tell you about that train. Can I, can I tell you the story about that train tunnel? Yeah, so, yeah. This was after the, the incident with the uh, with the train car in the tunnel. So this was probably maybe a year or two later, right? So we get a call for that same train tunnel for smoke in the tunnel. I'm thinking, oh shit, here we go again. You know, here's train tunnel. So we get there. I'm on 16 truck, and we get down. It's like two in the morning, and it's a single 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 company call, just truck 16. To investigate. Imagine that, two in the morning again. Yeah, two in the morning, just to investigate. <laughs> you know, smoke smoke in the tunnel, right? So we get there, and the officer's with us. So we look up. And we looked probably about maybe 100 feet into the tunnel. You could see a glowing haze. You could see a glow of a fire burning. I'm like, all right. So uh, we go ahead. We get our tools, get our bottle. We go in. We go in. We start walking in. Next thing you know, you see this light coming at you. It's Ooh. getting bigger and fucking bigger. <laughs> it's and steely it's, running know, out of the taxpayer. <laughs> there's no train there's no train tunnel. I mean, no, in, no, in, no, in the no, train no. tunnel, there's no... You have nowhere to really no clearance. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. No yeah. Clearance. There's nothing there. So we turn around. Oh shit! So we are running full steam ahead, running out of this train tunnel. Why this train light is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And we were uh, the movie Stand by Me when they're running on the yeah, track. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> we were able uh, to get out of the tunnel, you know, before. before you know, up to us, but, uh, I would have so been tired of that. Up, fire wind up being uh, some some debris or trash that was burning uh, beside there. That's funny. My boy, John Johnson, he says, uh, what I like about this podcast is everyone is always that, that's on this podcast is always talking about that guy that helped him through the years of service. Yeah. 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 That's what it's all about, man. Yeah. I had, I got a list of names here, guys. I mean, yeah, you know, I had jotted down some names, of course, uh, chief Mike Moritz, you know, Rick Lego, Jack Sapo, God rest his soul, help a fireman. Great guy. Uh, Jerry Smith, of a fireman, he's an EVD, he's over at uh, <clears throat> truck five, and of course, you heard me mention uh, Paul Novak, and uh, a you know, great, great lieutenant, him and Cole Carter, he was my officer on uh, four truck, you know, just um, you know, you, you learn from these guys, and you learned a, a really good way of doing it, and um, and they held you accountable, you know, they it's they held you accountable, and uh, so it was good, it was it was fun, it was a good time. What was that other question, Guns? It was uh, the captain. They were asking about the Discovery Channel. Still on the job. Mm. Is the name still on the job? Uh, no, there was. Um, well, Lieutenant Novak, Captain. I'm not sure which one he's talking about. I don't know which captain he's talking about on that one. I know the FIB captain retired. Oh. Captain uh, from the rescue, he's retired. He moved down to Florida. Um, but uh, Paul Novak, he was a lieutenant on 13 engine. He was. Uh, mm. No. I do have one more for you while we're at we'll lock out this last question. Somebody wants to hear about the raccoon around Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had a raccoon. It was rabbit. It was a rabbit raccoon. So we in the morning always made a tradition with the guys. You know, you kind of, you know, my thing was in the morning with the guys, you know, you get checked in, you know, get your stuff together. Everybody's 
you know, has their stuff together, go through the payroll, kind of like a morning routine. And then we would always go up to uh, Dunkin' Donuts up the road. You know, just a little us time, you know, coffee, tea, you know, whatever. And uh, so a lady comes out. We were into Dunkin' Donuts. She comes in. She goes, there's a raccoon running around in the parking lot. So we go out there and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's rabid. It's got itself up against the wall. It's like rearing itself up like it's going to strike at you. So we, you know, we get a couple ceiling hooks. And we kind of like, uh, then we kind of you know shoot it away, and in the meantime, I'm on the phone with communications, calling up, um, you know, get the animal control here, you know, kind of get this animal out and you know, off the street because there was like it was like a little shop, little uh, storefront shop, sounds right there, and uh, so he wound up running in the woods. So yeah, that was unique. Yeah, okay. No raccoon. Yeah. Mm. I think it might be that time for him to impart some uh, words of wisdom on our young oh, guy. What do you think, John? I, I think so. Oh, you know what time it is. Oh, well, let's let's do it. It, it, it is that time, time for oh. the old, old school tip, tip of the day. Mm. day. All right, LT, it's all yours. All right, old school tip of the day, guys. Here we go. Tip of the day. Um, check your shit. You know, <laughs> I, I want to say that to uh, the guys, uh, you know, and anybody that's listening now. You know, check your shit. Um, when you get in in the morning, you know, uh, Folks tend to take things for, uh, you know, that that it's everything's okay. The night shift before me didn't have any runs. You know, I don't need to check the air mask. I don't need to start the saws. I don't need to check the O2 on the medic. You know, those kinds of things. And I got to tell you, a few times, um, you know, I've seen companies, and along with myself, have gotten caught to where, you know, you go to get the tool, you go to start the saw, um, you go to put your SCBA on, which happened to me. You, I put it on. We had a fire. And it was uh, it was stuck in the uh, the free flow position. It's something very avoidable if I would have taken a moment and check it. And I usually do, but that morning I for some reason didn't. Something else was going on. So yes. So if I had the tip of the day, check your shit. Make sure your tools are right. Make sure uh, your gear's right. You have everything. And um, and check out SCBA. Man, that is your that is your ticket home. Uh, Make sure you uh, you check that. It, I can't I can't emphasize that more. So yeah. All right. You know it's funny you say that. What what I I found and it happened to me was I used to just per, put the bottle on, doot, 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 right? Shut the yeah. bottle off, purge the mask, and yeah. that was it, right? We all have done it. Yeah. Right. It. And then, but I never put the mask on all the time. Like I, you know, yeah. you get into habits. And then one time, I'm not going to say, but uh, I was working in a different firehouse. Of course, guys checked my bottle for me. I watched them check in the brig, but I always checked my bottle, even in a different firehouse, obviously. And I did the same exact thing. And uh, I had a kick-ass job. I was first due second alarm. And uh, I went to put the mask on. And there was some type of uh, apparatus in the mask that I couldn't put it <laughs> totally to my face. So yeah, I had yeah. to actually, I had to turn it around and use it as it was because it was all yeah. part of the face piece. So I had to actually hold it. It was actually like that, yeah. allegedly. And, you know, I lost my eyebrows. I came out looking like this microphone and, uh, you know, I couldn't do the job and it was pretty shitty. You know what I mean? Like really scary. Like I thought, you know, I actually tried to get a face piece off of one of my, my company ended up responding. That. I tried to get the face piece. Now, again, the guy who that was, apologized up and down to me but in the end it was my it's fault it's you know what i mean yeah it's and from that mean. time on mm. from that time on getting to your case from that time on it didn't matter i always put the fake the mask on yeah. took a few breaths made sure it was good yep took it off shut yeah. it purged it and it was right you know put it in the position that i wanted and i knew it was ready well, to go what you yeah. should have done was check your shit Bro, check bro, your shit. Check, shit. Yo shit. check your shit. And it's I nothing more embarrassing. For that. <laughs> it's nothing more embarrassing. Uh, yeah. All right, God, we got to do the uh, health and safety tip, please, sir. Uh, yes, yeah. yes, we do. Let me get that. Stand by, key. Steve. Stand by. Don't go nowhere. Are you ready? Here we go. Mm -hmm. The First Responder Center for Excellence is a not for profit organization dedicated to protecting the lives and livelihoods of first responders. Their education and research initiatives aim to bring greater awareness and understanding to the challenges to the health, safety, and well-being of firefighters, EMS personnel, and other first responders, too. They are an affiliate of the National Fallen Firefighter Foundation. 
This one's very near and dear to my heart, guys. You ready? Mm -hmm. Here is the health and safety tip of the day. Firefighter health and wellness is critical to ensuring the safety and effectiveness of firefighters. Do not underestimate the power of sleep. Mm -hmm. Consistent and adequate sleep helps maintain alertness and cognitive function. I will be cuddly waddly under my blanket in about 15 minutes, bro. So <laughs> nice. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. And, all right, don't forget, put that up too, Gonzo. Come out and see me and Louie uh, on the 2nd, 3rd, and 4th of February. You got your little thing there, Gonz? There, there it is. 2nd through the 4th, Nassau Coliseum. We are in booth 142. We have people coming by all day long, some heavy hitters. Come out and see us. Uh, we may have Paul Hershagen out there signing his book. I will let Ooh. you know next show. Very He's going to nice. try to make it, and he will be signing his uh, book, 100 Years of Valor. That's it. Gotcha. Just, just uh, post up that uh, mm. that GoFundMe. Somebody sent this to me. I don't know much about it. Uh, I just figured uh, guys could take a look at it. If, okay, yeah, I'm going to – I'm just gonna Yeah, yeah no problem. Take There's something for you in the, in the – uh, private chat as well there let me pull that up oh, for me you guys can read it i don't know if you want to touch on it it was just uh what i have what i did for you guys is i have this and then uh that was the actual yeah so it's, it's on go find me shoulder the weight for tim just uh check it out i'm not sure exactly what the situation is but uh it was sent to me from uh, one of our uh uh listeners so i just wanted to throw it up there okay yeah, I, I don't know, know what the other thing is, guys, in the private chat. Well, there was a, a picture of, um, I don't know if you guys wanted to talk about it. I'll pull it up really quick. Not a big deal. It was this pick right here. There you go. Oh, two handsome nice. fellas there. Look at that. There you go. Yeah. The Italian Stallion. Baltimore City. <laughs> uh, that's where I first met him at the uh, at the show, the trade show, the Long Island show. He was with Timmy Klett. Okay. Yeah. I think he's uh, he works for NIOSH now. I think that's what he's doing since he's Ooh. retired. He knows how to do it. To there do you it. go. Yeah. He's good, great, great fireman, great leader, uh, just all around great. I mean, you, you don't make him like uh, Chief Lego, that's uh, for sure. So what do we have on Monday, Ruff? Do we, uh, I didn't even look. Do you know? Off the top of your head? I have so many guys. I know Paulie Solman's coming on. I got, got a uh, lot of big guys coming on. We got a lot of big shows. The uh, rescue documentaries coming out. We got some big news possibly yeah. coming down the pipe. Captain Silvino. Oh, that's Ooh, right. Captain Silvino, bro. Louis knows says, him. Yeah. He's the real deal, bro. I love his email. Italian something, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's it's Italy. Italy. It's okay. <laughs> 283. Oh, yeah. Gabagol over here. Oh, Gabagol. All right. Don't forget to come out and see us. Booth number 142. Second, third, fourth of February. Come on out. Maybe we might be drinking in the booth. Maybe we won't. I don't know. We'll see what happens. All right, guys. Steve, Lieutenant nice. Steve, great, great job. Career, great brother. career, man. Yeah. I, I got to tell you. Stories. It was, uh, it was, it was, a, it was a great run. And um, I, I wouldn't do it any other way. I wouldn't do it any other way. And now we have your story for posterity. We got it here in the files, in the bank, in the files, in the, files. In the can. It's uh, back for the old poop, the back of the Rolodex days. You know yeah, Rolodex days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they'll be saying, remember that show getting salty? Yeah, yeah there's yeah, no bullshit. You, dead. you talk about Rolodex. We mentioned Rolodex at the Academy. Just right. guys look at me funny. I'm like, oh, oh shit. Guys. I just mentioned something the other day about the library, the Dewey Decimal System. My son's like, the what? Like the Dewey oh, Decimal right. System. The drawers, the box cards, the box, nothing, no, no, fuck no. The box assignment <laughs> cards that used to be in the firehouses, you know. Oh, yeah, like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you relocate, we used to relocate, yeah. you used to have to get yeah. that card too, right? Take your cards, yeah. Take your oh, cards. back in the days. All right, listen, I gotta get into bed because firemen need sleep, you know what I'm saying, bro? Yeah, yeah. Even, retired fire, even retired firemen need sleep yeah. in the can, in the can. So, we'll see you on Monday night. Thanks for coming on, Steve. Until then, stay low and go, peeps. All right, everybody. We'll see you at the big one. Thanks he's again, gonna, brother. He's going to see you at the big one. Saddle up, gentlemen. Sounds like work. And ladies, sorry. Look forgive me. Oh. Love it, man. He's got his new one. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to keep our names going. I'm gonna, all the ones that you guys have done. Real Gonzo's back. Thank you, Gonzo, for coming all right. back. All right. all right, guys. Stay safe. Good night.